Well, the penultimate episode of Season 2 has just been released, and it's safe to say that it was a good way to set up a season finale. Whilst I don't think it was as good as the previous episode, Episode 8, it was one that gave us a good insight into the history of Dermacell, whilst also giving us the largest death count that we've seen in a while. So with that, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is Foundation Season 2, Episode 9, Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Origin of Dermacell this episode quite literally picked back up from where the previous one finished. We were told a story from 600 years ago where we saw Cleon I discovering the chamber, a young prince at the time who laid his eyes on Dermacell who was trapped there. Dermacell's desire to be free was made apparent in this episode, but we saw just how much she desired freedom when the first words that she uttered in thousands of years were, Will you set me free? However, Cleon didn't feel she deserved freedom, as he didn't get to have freedom from the throne. This was something that lasted decades. We learned that Dermacell was from Earth and was created 18,000 years ago. She was a leader of soldiers from the famous war of robots versus humans, so it showed the immense power that she had when she once had that freedom. Following the war, she was captured by Emperor Aberarus and was taken to the palace. He was an individual that was fascinated by a machine woman, especially considering that she was so rare, and he studied what he found. Following him knowing that he was going to die later on in life and coming to the realization that Dermazel knew everything that he did, he was worried that upon his death she would go free and spark the war again whilst knowing the Empire's disadvantages. So ultimately, that's why she ended up trapped underground for thousands of years. Brother Day allowed her to be put back together but still kept her behind closed doors, allowing a slight improvement. It was with time and with temptation that she eventually was able to be let free but only once something was placed inside of her to prevent her from harming a Cleon, and also something which prevented her from transferring out of that initial shell, meaning that she could never dethrone Empire and become the leader. She had the opportunity to harm Cleon when she was released, but because she didn't, she was now trapped in an eternity of serving Cleon and being unable to harm him, providing no sense of freedom whatsoever, only a larger prison, ensuring that the Cleonic dynasty continued. This was where we also found out that Dermacell was an individual that was behind the fact that the Cleons have their memory removed, as Cleon I made sure that the further iterations only had selective memory and they wouldn't remember any of the initial encounters. Dermacell's very programming proves to be a threat for Day and Sarith, as the thing that she was sworn and programmed to protect will soon cease to exist, so it'll be interesting to see how she handles it. I imagine she's going to prevent it from happening. Empire on Terminus Following the epic scene in last week's episode where Hobomelo landed on Trantor in front of Empire's palace, we saw the retaliation being sparked. This meant that Brother Day was heading towards Terminus with the intention of seeing what it was all about from a first-hand perspective. He was leaning towards diplomatic reasoning in choosing to let Terminus function as its own entity but swear its allegiance to Empire instead of Harry Seldon. But once down there and seeing that he believed it to be an armory and a cult and that they were set in their ways, he wanted to take what he believed was rightfully his and swore to destroy the planet, something which he did eventually go on to do. We saw that Constance's father was killed in an abrupt and brutal fashion with Day piercing him, and we also saw that Polly met his fate when the planet was destroyed. There was a great moment with him putting the flag down right at the top of the hill in front of the vault, something which they did many years ago when he was a young boy, back in Season 1, Episode 1, showing just how far he got and it rounded off his arc in a really nice, reflective way, showing that he achieved all he wanted to out of life. He died for what he believed in. I'm just gutted that we won't see him anymore. Within this episode, there were some real interesting moments throughout Brother Day's time on Terminus as well. There was a great moment in this scene where we saw Brother Day inside of the vault, and we witnessed how insecure Day was, and just how much he didn't want to live in Cleon the First's shadow, and that he wanted to be his own entity. Selden said, you would have just uncogged another one, in response to Dermacell when she said how he could have killed them. This sparked a fit of rage from Day as he destroyed what was on Selden's desk, showing that the very idea of being replaceable was something that still lied within his mind, and made up the center of his personality. When the blind angels were mentioned, the camera cut to Dermacell. I think this is because she's behind the attack. We know that she's there to ensure that the Cleonic dynasty continues as Cleon I had planned it to be. 
And with Day marrying Sarith and looking to unravel all that Cleon I intended, with the original Cleon putting something inside of her which meant that she could never harm a Cleon, I think she hired the blind angels to carry out the attack. And then, when a new day was formed, she could have ensured that the marriage to Sarith was something that he wouldn't have remembered. That's one theory behind it anyway. There was a moment where we saw Brother Day inflict some kind of inferiority onto Dermazel and called her a piece of artificial intelligence essentially stating that she was the same as the Prime Radiant, something which looked as though it angered her. And then, when Day went on to say about how the fate of humankind would be determined by those that were actually human, that was also something that caused her face to drop slightly, so it's interesting to see that she took offense to those comments. The final moment that we saw between Brother Day and Selden was something which was focused around Empire basically saying that he wanted Selden to get him to announce that his predictions and science were wrong. Something which Selden refused to do, knowing full well that it would cause Terminus and the innocent people to be destroyed. Selden said to Dermacell, the future is invented every second, invent a better one, almost implying that he knew just how valuable and powerful she was. But I think we'll see if anything comes from that in time. With Day undermining her and Selden treating her with respect, I do wonder what will come of Dermacell in the season finale. After this, Day left and he had the Prime Radiant with him. When Day launched his attack on the Invictus, with it crashing down on Terminus and killing everybody in the center of it, we saw that Dermacell got a message that she needed to return to Trantor. I think this message is notifying her about how Dusk and Njoina Ru are trapped within the chamber. She knows of the existence of the place because she was trapped there for 5,000 years, so I feel she would most definitely be notified if something was going on down there. Gail and Tellum this was a part of the story where there wasn't that much time spent at all, which was something that did surprise me, especially considering there was a lot at stake at the end of the previous episode. However, we did see it all get resolved and it ultimately concluded. Within this episode, we saw that Salvor broke free from the tomb that she was kept in, and she managed to intervene in the transferring of the mind ritual and prevented Telem from entering Gal's shell. She did this by utilizing the dishes that prevented the Mentalic's powers from working, and she put them on Max and launched them into the middle of the hall. This meant that Gail and Salivor were able to escape, and they headed towards the beggar. There was a moment where I thought that Gail might lose her sight, seeing as though she was repeating the phrase back to tell him during the ritual, but that never happened. A simple slap allowed her to snap out of it, something which I wasn't really the biggest fan of. It just didn't really feel like much thought went behind it. Once they were at the beggar, we saw two fights taking place, one between Leron and Salvor, and the other between Telem and Gale. The battle with Telem and Gale was definitely the most interesting one, as it all happened inside of the mind as well as in reality. Gale was shown her father, and also the fears that were inside of her mind, which contained one that was in the future where the mule caused destruction and devastation. It was particularly interesting to see how Telem responded to the mule, and we saw that she was fearful of him just as much as Gail was. If anything, Gail didn't actually seem that frightened. The mule knew Telem's name though, something which I thought was interesting. Again, there was a small focus that was put on Josiah when Salvor broke into the hall where the transferring of consciousness was taking place. So could the fact that the mule knew Telem's name mean that it could be him? I'm not giving up on it, as it does feel like there's still a chance that it could be Josiah. Outside, we saw that Salvor was fighting with Leron, and to be honest, it was one of those battles that didn't really amount to anything. It kind of just felt like the show needed to keep Salvor busy whilst Gal was dealing with Telem. Leron kept imprinting the image of Hugo inside of Salvor's mind to try and make it more difficult to fight, which was something that she fell for every single time. I don't know, I feel like maybe after the second time you wouldn't become as prone to it, but she did. However, it resulted with Salvor beating Leron and her being inside of the beggar. I thought that Leron had an ounce of goodness inside of him, and that his character would go in a slightly different direction, but I was definitely proved wrong. With it looking like Telem had the better of both Gale and Salvor, as she was about to attack Gale, out of nowhere Harry seldom returned, looking like he'd been through a lot, and he unleashed hell onto Telem. Quite literally, it looked a mess. But it left me wondering, how did he manage to survive? That's something that I imagine we're most probably going to need to wait until the season finale for. Telem thought it was Gale using some kind of vision, and she shrugged it off. But if she took it seriously, then maybe she'd still be alive. Death was the one and only thing that Telem feared, and she faced it in this episode. With Telem being dead, that leaves the Mentalics without a leader, which is a position that they've not been in for several years. 
especially judging by the fact that Tellum's had multiple carnations of herself. So I think that will leave Ignis in a very interesting position, especially when it comes to forging the pathway of the future. Overall review. I thought this episode was okay. I don't think it's the best episode of the entire season, but I think it did a good job at laying down the foundations of what's to come in the season finale. It very much seems like the first foundation has now been destroyed, and the second foundation is vital for Selden's vision and image of the future to go on as planned. I enjoyed learning more about Dermacell and the origin of the character. Knowing that she was around 18,000 years old and was trapped for around 5,000 years was definitely interesting. Knowing that she's essentially Empire and has a life that despite being restricted has some kind of freedom to it is also interesting to know, as it was something that she never originally desired. She was given something that many people would dream of, but in reality, it's more of a curse, because she doesn't have the one thing that she yearns for, freedom. She's programmed to ensure that Empire continues on as Cleon the First planned. However, with her not being able to harm Cleons, she's not able to allow the vision that Cleon the First had to play out. I'm looking forward to seeing how this season of the show is going to draw to a close. It's been a blast of a season, and I can't predict at all how it's going to end. With Terminus destroyed and Brother Day having the largest smile on his face that he's had in a long while, I think bad things are definitely on the horizon. So, there you have it. Foundation Season 2 Episode 9, Ending Explained. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.